on the equipment. It's very inexpensive. Nikon D7000, a Sigma 50mm f1.4 lens. I like Sigma lenses. I also have all the Nikon, Canon, and Sony lenses, but I do like the Sigma lenses for their performance. And the little Nikon SB900 and the LightSphere collapsible. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit menu. And the first thing you'll get is the playback menu. Let's navigate down until we get to the custom shooting menu. On the custom shooting menu, we'll select bracketing and flash, which is E, press the OK button, which will take us to these different uh, setups. We're looking for flash control for built-in flash. And built-in flash means the pop-up. So right now it's on TTL. TTL meaning when you pop up the flash and take a picture, it will give you a through the lens exposure meeting, metering that should be correct. So let's go into it. And instead of having it on TTL, Let's turn it into commander mode. Commander mode means that I'm going to use that pop-up flash not as a flash, but as a trigger, a master trigger to tell other people what to do. So in this, we've got a grid, and it says in commander mode, what do you want the TTL flat, the built-in flash to do? Do you want it to be TTL? I think not, because we want it to be turned off, because we want this to be only a trigger, and we don't want to see any flash from this guy. We want to see only flash from ex exposure group A. Exposure group A is something that we're going to assign to one of the flashes. And if I had two of the flashes and I wanted to go to uh, a different exposure group and I wanted to change the uh, compensation to say increase the uh, exposure to make it brighter, say like if it's a hair light or whatever, um, we would do that. But for right now, let's just not worry about it. We could turn it off or we could just not have a, a, any flashes on group B. And then channel, let's just go ahead and keep it on channel 3. You have a choice of four channels, and the only reason why you want to change channels is if there's a bunch of other people around shooting with Nikons off-camera flash and you're all tripping each other's lights, then kind of like on the police detective shows, you go, I'm going to go to channel 2, and everybody says okay, and then they move to channel 2. You would do that for your own flashes. So I like to set it on 3 because, I don't know, most people would probably have it set on channel 1. Okay, so that is that. And let's go ahead and get out of this menu. And now let's go to the flash. There. Okay, so it's on remote right now. And you'll see it's on channel A, exposure group A. Remember exposure group A on the other camera, you should, probably should have written it down. And it's saying channel 3. So that's actually fine the way we have it. We want it on exposure group A, which we have it set at TTL and then channel 3. Remember, channel 3, so we don't have any of the other people, uh, you know, interfering with our signal when we're doing our flash. That's basically it. Now you've got the camera completely synced to the flash for the flash to do remote. Let me turn this guy around so you can kind of see what happens on the front here. So on the front here, so on the front here, now you'll see a couple blinking lights. And that this is a reminder that your flash is a slave. And it, uh, it's also a nice reminder to show you that this area here has to be aiming toward your camera. If it's not aiming toward your camera, it's not going to see the flash that's coming out of your little pop-up flash. Okay, now that we're all set up, let me show you how to do the equipment. Okay, so now that you've got your flash set up, here's the issue. You've got basically a shoe that's going to go on a stand, and the stand typically doesn't have a shoe, anything to mount the shoe on. So you have to get a couple of ways to adapt the pieces to fit. And this is a real simple way. In the box where you bought your flash, it basically came with a table stand. You probably thought, well, I'm never going to use that, so maybe you threw it away. I hope not, because it's really handy. It's handy for like doing things like bouncing gels off of walls and stuff like that. It's a floor stand, and it's kind of neat. Uh, or you can use it as a display uh, in your, I don't know, case where you show your photo equipment. It's kind of geeky, but whatever. Um, oh, the lights are still on. So now you've got this stand, and the stand has what's called a quarter 20. Now the light stands here, If uh, sometimes they'll have a quarter 20, but if you screw it straight in the quarter 20 now, you can't do anything in terms of swivel or turning or whatever. So that's why you need to get yourself a roller ball. And I use this one. This is called a Joby. And the Joby's really cool. Uh, it's got a big, big rubbery knob. And, you know, I'm not sponsored by Joby in any way, but I really like it because you just kind of turn it slightly and it locks. Okay. So I'm going to unscrew it right now so that I can put the uh, hot shoe or the quarter 20 adapter straight onto this. And once I get it tight, 
and then you'll see what I mean by how nice it is to have the rollerball. So here's the rollerball, and again, so if I want to just make it hold like that, I just squeeze it tight and it sticks. So that's how to put it on the stand. You really just need the rollerball. You can put this rollerball on a tripod or on a stand. I like the stand right here. This is the Manfrotto. It's called the it's pretty inexpensive, but it's called the 5001B. And what's nice is it really, it folds up into itself so that it's like this tiny, tiny thing that folds up about that tall. So this will easily fit into my uh, bag, into my little case that I travel around with, but it goes up as high as, as you'd want, except for maybe, you know, shooting basketball players or something like that. So that's that. And then what I do, obviously, to soften the light, because it's going to be too harsh outdoors for shooting with the... Uh, direct flash, especially if I want to just have a gentle fill. And in fact, in this video, I'm going to compare uh, studio, so we literally took a studio flash uh, power pack out with a big umbrella, and we compared that to the light sphere collapsible. So again, on the light sphere collapsible, I just put it down like that, face down. This is the big honking huge Nikon SB900 flash, and you can see it goes on very, very quickly like that. Once it's on, it's not going to fall off. In fact, I can pick up the entire stand, a camera, whatever. It's not going to fall off, and that's, that's what I really like about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a soft uh, light source for my model. And now all we're going to do is we're going to go outdoors into a sidewalk on a street, and I'm going to turn that into a portrait location by simply using fill flash, allowing the fill flash to create some beautiful modeling and also take away a lot of that overexposed bright area look that looks a lot like an available light photo. So um, this is what the available light photo looked like. And so we just went ahead and took that photo like this. And you can see it just looks like a regular snapshot. And uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's kind of nice, whatever, but uh, it doesn't look like anything spectacular. Then we went and uh, put it on the umbrella. And on the umbrella, we literally had a studio power pack and uh, like a $2,000 rechargeable battery. It wasn't mine, it was my friend Stephanie's. I borrowed it from her. And we put that on. Now, a lot of times I see photographers outdoors shooting with these big studio packs, maybe um, 98 foot long uh, electrical cord going all the way into the catering hall, things like that. To get, and then the wind blows the umbrella and it goes over. And, and to me, that, that, I don't know, I giggle a little bit. And I'll tell you why, because the quality of the light doesn't really change in uh, situations like that. When you're uh, further out, then of course you need a larger uh, source of light to make it look softer. But when you're closer in, all you need is a diffuse source. And so, and you need it off camera to give yourself directional light. Now in this shoot, I actually used uh, radio. And what I like about the radio is I can just kind of go right back here and just press my different controls on it. It's also radio so that it won't get lost, like I don't have to press this blinking, have this blinking center aimed right at my, my camera. But also I can just instantly turn it into high speed sync. And under high speed sync in these photos, I took it up to 1 8,000th of a second shooting at f1.8. This is the look I like that I can really get a lot of uh, selective focus with a 50 millimeter f1.4 lens and then get a very, very beautiful fill light that comes in and looks natural. So now um, we're going to go outside and as you can see I've just taken a photo of my model in open shade and in open shade I've got some you know soft even lighting from the wall and the sidewalk and everything like that so it's pleasant enough but the background is completely overexposed and all of the contrast areas are really starting to show so that motorcycles really starting to show and everything like that so now what we'll do is we'll go over and I'll show you the umbrella what I've done is I've taken the umbrella from the photography studio that I'm at and you know, plugged it into the wall just took it right outside and we've got a large umbrella and a studio lighting system and so what we have here is what you would expect big broad lighting fill and a dark background now I've got the light sphere collapsible on a stand and it, uh, it acts as a flash fill. It's off camera, of course. That's the effect that we're getting with a light sphere collapsible. So 
the umbrella has very broad, e uh, even lighting. It's actually quite directional, so it's, uh, as you can kind of see, it's more visible, it's more obvious that there's a big poof of light on the side where the umbrella is. The light sphere is a nice natural fill, and as you can see the difference between the available and the light sphere, the light sphere has brought the sky back in, brought in a really, really nice kind of a watercolor palette to the background, and uh, also there's a very nice modeling on the girl's face. And the photo on the left with available, you can see she almost looks flat and two-dimensional, where we've brought back more of the shape of her face with the flash fill. And that's the reason why we do flash fill.